Pierre-Yves Bourgeois from Femto Este, who will talk about phase noise and digital noise and why it is important for groundbreaking RF applications. I hope you have a good time in this conference and uh, I try to be as fast as possible as we need a beer and a barbecue tonight. <laughs> and we all uh, attend uh, Marcus' talk. So uh, I try to be that fast. I wanted to talk to you today about some phase noise consideration. It's just uh, almost like a tutorial for beginners or newcomers and to have some insight of what's going on behind this strange phase noise stuff and digital noise as well. And the main thing, the first thing we can have a look at is uh, th there are some kind of here. Th this is an experiment that's been done with four different kind of uh, uh, measurement devices and we, we can uh, see some kind of differences. And especially in this measurement, in this area, there, there are a very uh, kind of discrepancies, a lot of spikes, green spikes here uh, with uh, our developed version. And once we remove the spike, magically uh, both spectrums matches. So this is a bit strange when you buy something like 90 kilo euros equipment. So the, uh, the, this motivation uh, in time and frequency metrology and in digital world, especially target, I mean, uh, almost uh, any, any kind of stuff, uh, high precision digital method, the fully digital signal analysis, sequentization noise kind of analyzers. So this is all measurement bench. But also some state space controls, the lock amplifier, the DSPLL, everything. We, we can have some uh, measurement inside. And also some frequency synthesis and transfer, for example, some millisecond pulse or timing, the SDR, telecom and networks, pulse programming, blah, blah, blah. And as evidence, also uh, fundamental physics. Uh, more in our concern, in our lab, I'm more focused on high precision uh, time frequency based on compact uh, single eye and trap YouTube and optical clock. I'm just uh, looking at digital stuff in there. And cavity based optical oscillators. I did build the first fringe uh, cryogenic sapphire micro resonate oscillator back 15 days ago. And now you can buy it for just, uh, let's say, it's a thousand. <laughs> add on Pluto boards. And we used to build also a, a, a digital phase noise analyzer. There is the Labcom, which with the company, Gorgi Timing, uh, and the, with the observatory of Besançon, and uh, uh, which targets to disseminate time uh, to the clients uh, under certified manner. And uh, recently, uh, G, uh, GM and all shows that uh, it's, not, it, it's not that uh, uh, hard to break the to spoof at least the GPS. And that's all from frequency <coughs> dissemination stuff. And also we have some RT with the CNES, which is the National French Ag uh, Space Agency, and also DJI, which is kind of army. And uh, to, to, to have a look at digital oscillation and high frequency stability for space systems. Uh, why the, we need uh, stable frequencies? The most straightforward answer for every, everyone is just you want to have a great voice into your mobile phone and you want to be at the right place. This is this two situation. I, I actually, I, I put VLBI example, but it's more likely to be the deep space tracking. Imagine you have a vessel or uh, the space shift, your aircraft, the U USS Enterprise you want to localize into space. And uh, wh what you need to do is to send an electromagnetic wave and, uh, and wait for the way back. Uh, uh, during that time, which is called the round trip light time, and uh, your uh, ground station oscillator based reference should be stable. And this has been told us just precedingly uh, by Paul. And just Venus is just uh, in front of us. It's just the door, next door to us. It takes 144 seconds. So during 144 seconds, you need to really get stable frequency. 
and to 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 give you some some ideas of what fragrance stability is is about today 10 to the minus 15 frequency deviation so imagine you have 10 to the minus 15 hertz deviating from the average uh, clock frequency it represents the measurement of the moon and earth at just mic uh, 20 micrometers or a watch that gains or loses a second every 70 million years of course this is not for gps but more likely for legal stuff and and uh, uh, yeah, and more uh, uh, fundamental physics. The optical clocks and oscillators, uh, we have an insight by Nicola just recently, so I, I, I will uh, a bit fast here. The, the thing is we have a, a very stable cavity which acts as a reference here, and you need to, to, to stabilize a laser onto this cavity so you can, you can interrogate an atom here, and once the atom is uh, is giving its frequency, uh, you can have some kind of control and transfer uh, the clock signal into RF domain, thanks to optical combs. Uh, just an optical comb is just a, a super optical synthesizer. In our lab, we 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 try to put digital stuff everywhere and especially in uh, cavity stabilized lasers. So th this, is, uh, th th this is the basic uh, cavity uh, stabilized laser. So you have the cavity here, so you have the laser there, and you have a fiber link system because sometimes it's not in different rooms or it's not in different places, so you need to have fiber links that are uh, active uh, compensated with uh, uh, at least Doppler active compensation. And uh, once we explode those two, those two things there, there's a, a bunch of uh, digital stuff here, uh, which is make ready things of SDR things, except and uh, but also the PID controllers everywhere. And so, so it uses our developed uh, ecosystem. I uh, give uh, just a word in a sec, and we use any web server, we have pretty good results and we raced favorably against a, the analog counterpart, so it's, it's, it's almost the same. But it's uh, very more convenient, of course. So we, use, uh, we can use a, we a web server to, to, with Remy uh, to act on, uh, on, on some, some constants and, and uh, act on the uh, uh, DDS uh, stuff and we have a look at the results with uh, GNU Radio uh, by passing the data through uh, ZMQ. So the problematic was to develop uh, an ecosystem, a solution uh, to fit our needs back uh, 2013. So we have mainly uh, this uh, ecosystem we have chosen, uh, Arctic-based ecosystem, which is based bitstream generation from Python, I won't go that much into details, just for your convenience here. Our FNAC system more dedicated to ATOS research with new radio and uh, firmware within the USRP. Purple is a German guy uh, who's, uh, who's had some abstraction layer on platform based on RedPitaya, uh, of course. And uh, our ex ecosystem we just released uh, soon with some interfaces, normalization drivers, and uh, all the toolkits uh, for different kind of, uh, of platforms. Uh, you just have to, it's been just released uh, late uh, end 2018, so you can uh, uh, have a look at uh, DuckDuck, it's on GitHub, with uh, Asim. And uh, for now, the support, it, uh, uh, compatible platforms, I mean, are uh, the Red Pitaya, the Adam Pluto boards. It was partial to yesterday, actually, and now it's full. So it is <laughs> thanks to Gwen again. <laughs> and uh, the hardware compatibility is also uh, correct with uh, the ZC706, which is the big, uh, the big uh, zinc, and uh, the USRP X310. Uh, we have it. Uh, and B210, but it's almost like a dead end with the USRP310. 
and uh, yes, different kinds of platforms, blah, blah, blah. We, uh, just this slide, just to show you that uh, digital is not always the right solution, so you have to very be careful on choosing the right solution here. It's just I want to show you that the learning curve is discouraging for many people. There is a problem with the locking bandwidth if you want to make locks. And the main problem as well is the quantization noise. And so you have to carefully design your thing. So what's noise? Uh, this is a slide I, I show to students, but I mean the first rule is that a perfect signal doesn't exist. It should exist at zero K, but it's impossible, of course. So, uh, so that means actually that it's possible for you to play with devices and transport information and play with uh, information. The second rule is that each time you manipulate the signal, it's, like it's likely getting worse. So each time you filter and add filters and try to add filters, blah, 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 it's going worse and worse. It's easy. You just, you, you just uh, have uh, some engineer if uh, he has some uh, garbage in or crappy sound in. He cannot do uh, as much uh, and cannot enhance your sound very well. So just the right solution is keep the highest SNR, so the signal to noise ratio up to uh, all the past long. And so the, the uh, not for students now. So the pure monochromatic waves, okay, I said it doesn't exist. Uh, as soon as you have a small atom that is moving, it's just generated thermal noise. And when you have variable items, you add complications. When you add environment, you have also complications. And noise builds up like that. <coughs> Basically, there are three main areas when you can uh, put some kind of noise in there. Everybody knows white noise. White noise is very convenient. We always reason uh, in mass with white noise because you can you can do whatever and uh, extend in uh, in the end to other kind of noise, but it does exist other kind of noise. The brain in motion, the joint side noise or thermal noise, all these three are exactly the same actually. The shot noise, which is a more Poisson low Poisson low formula uh, phenomena, and the flicker noise. Experimentally. When I say we experimentally verify, I mean the old guys verify that these noises phenomena are parametric. They're following uh, slopes. So this is actually very convenient because you just uh, have a different kind of uh, random world, frequent frequency, white frequency, flicker phase, and white phase noise. This is the power spectral density of phase noise. Back to basics, but what, how, how can I uh, write noise easily? Uh, you can imagine your friend on representation with your phaser. Just take your phaser and make it shaking uh, all the way up and down, uh, going uh, over the circle, down the circle, and shaking a bit. So you had modulations. Basically, this is that. This is the real, the, so the real signal, which is the physical signal, I mean, uh, the one for the oscillator. I mean, you can express it that way. It's really, really simple. And uh, the amplitude is modulated with noise. So you add an extra term here. All these are random variables. And the frequency also is modulated, and the phase as well. As both have the uh, same relation, we can end up having just two components and knowing that you're do what you want to do is to make perfect signal, remember. Uh, those quantities are really small. So the, as they are really, they are not, uh, it's not like your message is uh, drawn into big amount of noise. No, the noise is really small. Okay, so in the end, uh, uh, amplitude and phase modulation, so these random variables are really small, it's like 15, 10 to the minus 15. So it's just uh, very, very small. But still, we all reckon the modulation scheme. So what not using the SDR DDC kernel for that? Okay, SDR application is just extract information, so a message for any mixed RF signals, 
for the metrology point of view, this, uh, there is no information to extract but noise. Or at least the noise is the information you want to extract. Doesn't really matter, this is exactly the same technique. So all you have to do is to take into account uh, the, the DUT, the device in the test or the you know, signal source. Uh, this one is the perfect one. You had some noise, kind of noise, environmental noise, blah, 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 whatever. It just add up. Huh? Uh, you have the sampling, of course, to go to the digital world. So you add also uh, some noises coming from the clock noise, internal PLLs, blah, 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 whatever. You just add up and the DDC kernel here. And for the same, I don't know, I didn't put the, any noise in there, but actually there is. And once you get there, the ADC noise is really important to, have, uh, to take into account. And also the first filtering stage. After, no worries. The problem is that you want to decrease your sample rate and to extract the nose and go lower and lower. The brutal decimation, you take just one over every 10. And what's happened, it's just that the noise quantity remains exactly the same. So you divided the bandwidth, but the level is increasing. The noise level is increasing because just of aliasing. So all this alias, uh, uh, all these uh, aliases are folded back to basement or lower here. Just rule of thumb, you divide by 10 the, the, the bandwidth, you add 10 dB. Okay, so how, uh, how can you turn that into your advantages is just you filter before. Filtering before helps uh, getting out the alias uh, uh, stuff. Uh, you just have add a small amount of uh, noise, extra noise, which is due to the imperfection of filter. Actually, uh, in uh, digital signal processing, there are some tricky things that enable you to do the two things at the same time, filtering and decimating, with exactly so the same effects. Let's have a simulation now. You can, you can have a, this noise simulator is part of the Sigma Theta software you can find outline. Uh, this software is meant to, uh, to calculate island deviation of full, uh, many kinds of things. And uh, we're, working out, we're working out to, to do a library uh, to be usable in, inside uh, the, our ecosystem. So just to verify that uh, it's, uh, the, this rule and sum is correct, you ju we just ran two experiments and we verify clearly that uh, the brutal decimation at 10 dB once you decrease the uh, measurement bandwidth. And uh, this, la la this last slide is just a simulation of a 10 gigahertz uh, uh, cryogenic sapphire oscillator phase noise. And uh, see that the proof of this noise simulator that it's, uh, you can have it online enabled to, to show you different kind of slopes. Second, uh, the next problem is that your FFT is linear. So if you want to estimate the noise up to one second, or one hertz, sorry, the same, uh, you need a very, 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 very long FFT calculation. It's all impossible to manage, so you must artificially uh, reduce to bit the energy uh, logarithmically to interpolate the spectrum and have a clear uh, view of your spectrum there. Yeah, so I want a perfect filter. So the perfect filter, again, doesn't exist. Of course, because the inverse transform of the rectangular function is, of course, the sinus cardinal function and that goes forever and forever to time. And also you are in a digital domain that adds replicas. So what you need to do is to, uh, w to window your, uh, your thing function uh, to, to make it goes to zero to pre preserve casual causality. Again, it turns in the well-known uh, Gibbs phenomenon. And you, you say, oh, yes, I want a really cool filter with 10,000 coefficients. Yes, but this area 
it goes crazy at a certain moment. So this, is, this deserves you. And there are still some ripples there. You want to get rid out. So if you want to get rid out the ripples, okay, you use a Ramos-like algorithm. Uh, yeah, but uh, here you have a slope that's been softened. So it's always a question of trade-off. You, you won't have the straight answer any time, especially for uh, your first, uh, your, your first uh, stage. So basically, what's, what's the digital phase noise measurement uh, principle? It's just rather simple once we understood everything. So you have uh, you you just sample a DUT here and you pass through the DDC from there and you just so you have a super phase calculator here and this phase from this phase calculator you estimate the power spectral density so you calculate the FFT you do some normalization processes calculate the power spectrum and divide by the bandwidth to get the, your your power spectral density. And once you get there, you have this small area here, the upper uh, decade here, just this part. Then you go through another filter and decimate by 10 again, and reduce the calculation and goes the preceding decade. And you build up your, your, uh, your spectrum like this, because you have reduced each time the measurement bandwidth. So uh, it can go forever. Of course, but no, actually no, because you just go to one hertz or point one hertz, and that's enough. And after you pass to LN deviation, because it's just long term, so it's exactly the same. Finally, you just use frequency stability instead. Of course, uh, within the FPGA, uh, you have to perform some more, some more than this simple uh, thing here, because you, once you have the D, pass through the DDC here you make your act engine calculation with a cordic or whatever. Uh, uh, so you have this phase, which is going minus b pi. So you have to unwrap it. And once the phase time series and, and unwrapped, you have to remove the slope. And then you have the straight phase time series that you can now uh, estimate uh, uh, with this spectral. And here it's just to show you that you can do cross correlation techniques. And these cross correlation techniques by just uh, uh, calculating the cross product here uh, enables you to remove any kind of noise in uh, correlated terms in uh, two arms. But this is not sufficient. This is not sufficient because you can't remove the aid to the converted noise. So all what you have to do is to uh, put a four channel version. This is a bit tricky, but once you calculate the, the, the noise quantities, uh, you can remove the contribution of uh, the A to D converters uh, as soon as you are averaging your cross spectrums. And once you are averaged your cross spectrums, uh, it's it on uh, one over square root of number of correlation. So it can take a lot of time to calculate and a lot and consume a lot, a lot of data. Let's say the best, uh, one of the best, uh, they are all the same, uh, at the same level actually, because, because of the embedded quartz, which is limiting uh, the, the measurement. So they all start around minus 115 at one hertz. Uh, imagine you have a, a, a very good thing that, that is a, a 40 dB lower uh, at one hertz. You need to integrate six months to have your measurement. This can be a problematic. Another funny thing is that uh, at the first filtering stage here, with four channels, so it's IQ channels, you have 428 coefficients in, uh, within the FPGA for the filtering stage, and we calculate 17 tera operation per second. This is quite funny numbers. And of course, we developed that in uh, Four years with 10 million people and three lines of code. But we ended up having some cutie gooey. I need to go fast because it's less. Uh, so I just wish that we can do funny measurements. Uh, yes, with this formula, just you can calculate the NOB. 
just by measuring the phase noise here, the white phase noise. Okay, my question is, uh, is GNU radio able to, to be a measurement analyzer? So let's to verify that. I, I suppose it's, it's not meant to be for as first sight because uh, we need data manipulation, visualization. So let's just verify a simple example. We consider random noise and add a bit of physical measurement. That means I want 10 volts, blah, blah, blah. And you do the spectral measure. You have for this uh, uh, norm R&D or Gaussian noise source, a mean equal to zero and a variance equal to one. Oops. I took 250 kilohertz sample rate and uh, I, 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 we, we did uh, the frequency measurement uh, on 50, 512 FFT here and 8K points, I think. I can't read from there. Okay, but we observed different levels here. Uh, the variance in the mean are, are correct, but the levels are not. Uh, the measurement bandwidth remains the same, so the level should be the same. There is a bit problem here. Doesn't really matter. So this is the octave version. Uh, uh, the octave version, you have the piece of code here. Uh, it's just the calculation of the definition of the PSD. And you have the, the, this result, but you can also use the peri periodogram function that gives you exactly the same result. So no, ma no matter what's that, my, my goal is to have a new radio making a phase noise measurement. So, uh, so let's say my objective is measure uh, minus 100 uh, uh, dB red square per hertz at 10 megahertz, blah, blah, blah. So this is my reference uh, simulation. And uh, what I do here, I just re reproduce the PSD calculation here. I just split. Uh, uh, here, so I, I take a file source and it's going, I, I know uh, throttle is not, uh, I'm not very familiar with GNU radio, so I probably do mistakes, but I like this, uh, I like this because uh, there are funny colors, and uh, so this is great. In the end, we have two paths here, the QT uh, vector sync, which is uh, meant to represent the frequency actually, and uh, uh, in the GSP, and a QT uh, time thing here, uh, just to, to have a, an insight uh, what's going on on time. And it works. It works pretty well. And uh, so all, you, all we need to do now is doing some kind of block or, and, uh, and, per, and perform the other decades with uh, different uh, uh, decimation and, and so on. So that, that I think it's a great uh, promising tool to do really true uh, measurements. Thanks a lot. I, I'm, I'm a bit late now. Thanks a lot. Okay, does anyone have any questions? Thank you for this very technical presentation. Um, no, you don't want to ask my question? I mean, <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, I would like to know how you cope with uh, the sampling, sampling jitter of your ADC clock. Yeah. The jitter? Of the sampling clock. Uh, it dip Ah, uh, the you fact that your um, sampling clock is not uh, also a perfect clock. You mean the clock. external synthesizer that is used as a sampling clock for mm. the A to D converter? Yes, that's it. Yeah, okay, it's not the digital of the A to D converter. We usually have a very stable uh, Rackham based uh, um, oscillator, which is based on quartz and with a PLL and which has these strange limits of minus 115 dB red squared at one hertz. And this is why all commercial device and our as well has this limit at one hertz for the moment. Okay, thank you.